Kids saw you come home drunk last night when you were supposed to be watching them. I haven't seen you like this in years. Tommy, Ghost is plotting something against Milan, and he's f***ing drinking again. Call me back. Just how different would power have been if the show was called The Price? Centered on Ghost who was still a drug dealer, but someone who was in recovery from addiction looking to rebuild his life. That was the original pitch by Courtney Kemp about power. We were going to show coke on a scale, and then the dollar amount. So the price would have been the price of drugs, but also the price you have to pay to get a new life. Now the drug game that we see in Power Book 2 Ghost has quite a few different perspectives, but where we mainly see it through the lens of Tariq St. Patrick and the rest of the crew, where some are after power or freedom, we do have to bear in mind, there is another side, addiction. From a different perspective you can have it all and still feel limited, or be at a low but somehow be the most free. This is the perspective and angle we get to see in Raising Canaan. We've all seen and heard about stories of how addiction has ruined people's lives. For example, the way they humanise Sam in the finale of season 2. There are so many people who have fallen victim to addiction that have robbed them of what could have been a different life. So in the rest of this video, we're going to be breaking down the history of Ghost and his father Curtis's alcohol addiction, and how Ghost's past can end up being Tariq's future, because a point I raised in my episodes 9 and 10 breakdown was Tariq refusing alcohol. Are the writers foreshadowing what's to come for Tariq St. Patrick at some point in the future of Power Book 2 Ghost? Now the history of drinking in power actually runs deeper than many may think, and it starts with the top with Ghost's father Curtis. According to Courtney Kemp, Curtis used to own a jazz club, the same one we saw Ghost enter in season 6 where he met Uncle Gabe. Now as a young kid, Ghost grew up for a short period with his mother and father, but Curtis' drinking problem drove his mother away, and so it only just left Curtis and James St. Patrick. As Ghost started hanging around with Kanan and Tommy, Curtis tried to pull Ghost back out of the street game because he knew the consequences of either death or jail. Curtis then got into trouble with these local drug dealers, and Uncle Gabe gave us a little backstory in Season 6, something which I'm going to expand on in just a moment. I tried to tell your father, pay those drug dealers to leave us alone. Okay, you know, I got to know that you understand that I tried to tell him not to talk to the police. So Curtis got into some trouble with these drug dealers, and even though Uncle Gabe pleaded with him to pay them, he went to the cops and then those drug dealers murdered Curtis. Now to add some depth to this, we also had Ghost say he went to live with Tommy, and it's also well known that Kate raised both Tommy and Ghost, but I think it's safe to assume that these drug dealers that were trying to pull Ghost and Tommy back into the life could have been Kanan and Breeze, because we all know it was Breeze at the top, then Kanan who had Ghost and Tommy under him. I think Kanan and Breeze had to deal with Curtis because he went to the cops, but maybe getting rid of Curtis meant that Ghost had no option but to turn to the street game, but more importantly, look up to Kanan and Breeze as his mentors. How'd you meet my dad? He was in the gang with me, kid. He's a D-boy from way back. He ain't just moved shit, he's one of the baddest motherfuckers on the block. So we only have to ask the question, who had the most to gain from Curtis's death? And then again, who had the most to gain from Breeze's death? The answer is Kane and Stark. Now in power, we met Ghost who was at the top of the game. Club Truther was a vision and a dream that was dedicated to Curtis, and it was also truth which helped him envision a life which went beyond the drug game. The deal means that the truth brand will expand beyond my wildest dreams, but more importantly, our children will have legit money behind them for the rest of their lives. Ghost wanted to create a better life for his family and secure his kids' future with legit money for the rest of their lives, something he did leave behind for his kids and those he cared about through his trust. The same trust that was lost in the Western Holdings Ponzi scheme, although I highly doubt Ghost is someone who would trust Tariq, so I still feel as if he would have had extra measures in place to protect his assets, but who knows, only time will tell. That's just my personal opinion based on how smart Ghost was, who he was as a businessman, and how he knew one day Tariq would be arrested for homicide. You would have also probably thought Tariq would one day fuck up his entire trust fund, so for that reason, I do think he would have put something in place to protect his entire empire, but again, only time will tell. Now during power we were introduced to Ghost as a character who was most of the time in control, and to be in control you need control over your senses and your environment. He owned a nightclub, but he drank no alcohol. He was a man who always used to say, I've got this, I'm in control, which was until the moment he was manipulated into killing Rolla, a move that was put into place by Kanan from within prison, because he knew Ghost would not only be weakened by the death of a loyal soldier, but someone who would also be opposed to Kanan when he was released, and it was a smart move by Kanan, have Ghost take out one of his most loyal soldiers who would have been against Kanan Stark. But not only did this show Ghost still had trust in his former mentor, Ghost turned to alcohol for the first time in years, although it was during the Milan problem where we found out Ghost was someone who had a drinking problem in the past. Tasha told Ghost that she hadn't seen him like this in years, but in typical Ghost fashion, his response was, I'm in control. We then heard Tasha telling Tommy Ghost started drinking again, again being the key word. 
Now this comes back to the original story Courtney Kemp originally pitched, a drug dealer who was recovering alcoholic, similar to his father Curtis. Curtis's drinking problem drove Ghost's mother away, and who knows if she's still alive in the timeline. We haven't heard about her, nor do we even know her name. So that's just another side plot to Ghost's backstory, which they may explore in Raising Kanan, or even in Power Book 2 Ghost. Now when Kanan arrived on the scene, he got close to Tariq because they shared a hatred towards Ghost, and it was with Kanan where Tariq started drinking lean. Flash forward to Ghost Season 1, Tariq did drink at his 18th birthday party, but his drink was spiked by Riley, which is originally meant for Brayden. In a drunk state, he told Lauren that he doesn't usually drink, because he saw what he did to his father, and since then, we haven't seen Tariq touch any alcohol, which is why he refused in Episodes 9 and 10 of Season 3. Now, after what happened with Sax and Theo, Davis poured Tariq a drink and he looked at it and contemplated for a second, but he didn't take one little sip, and maybe he had what happened to him in Season 1 in the back of his mind. Maybe he thought about what Ghost was like when he had alcohol, but the camera panning to this drink left on the desk untouched was done for a reason. There was a very good reason why the writer showed us this scene, very similar to the way they did with Ghost in Season 1. So fast forward to Episode 10 where Tariq was looking for answers around Tasha's disappearance. He went to Kay Egan's home where she also offered him a drink. What are you drinking? Hennessy? I usually drink. Juice box? Again, he refuses, and I don't think it was such a coincidence why the writers chose to have Tariq refuse alcohol in both episodes 9 and 10. They're definitely leaving breadcrumbs for them to revisit in a later season, which may or may not be in season 4, it definitely could be later on, but they've definitely left these breadcrumbs for a reason. But the question is, what would make Tariq turn to alcohol? This is one of the reasons why we set the foundation earlier on in the video where we spoke about Ghost Father Curtis being an alcoholic, Ghost having not so much family left, and how Killing Roller was the catalyst to him turning to alcohol once again. If something happens in Tariq's life where he loses someone close to him, like Tasha, Yasmin, or Grandma Estelle, that could end up being Tariq's moment where he officially turns. His mother and family that he has left means the world to him, and everything that he's been working towards over the last few years is for the remaining St. Patrick's he wants to protect and provide. But just imagine a scenario where Tariq was to lose Tasha, what would that do to him? We all talk about how this would be a really dark moment in his life, where he would lose all humanity and really turn over to the dark side, which I definitely agree. I do think that's something that we'll see, but there is also this other side we can't rule out, him turning to alcohol. Now the alternative story could be very similar to what Ghost went through when he killed Rola, where Tariq kills someone who he really trusts, someone who he really loves, and someone who he's built a close bond and relationship. Although I would like to think it wouldn't be Brayden, I do think they've shown enough over the seasons to suggest their bond is very similar to that of Ghost and Tommy's, where they'll fight, have disagreements, but eventually they'll always come back around and protect each other. But could Tariq face a scenario where he has to take out someone who he loves, someone who he really trusts, and could that be the catalyst which makes him turn to alcohol? There's also the question of how does Tariq behave when he gets into a drunk state after the loss of a loved one. We all know Ghost was someone who entered into a dark place, especially after the death of Reyna. So are the writers setting this up for Tariq to turn to alcohol at some point in Power Book 2 Ghost? I do think it's a conversation we need to have because of the breadcrumbs that they've been leaving towards the back end of Season 3. It's definitely worth paying close attention to. But drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section and let me know what you think. What would make Tariq turn to alcohol and why would we see him picking up a bottle? Drop all your thoughts down below in the comment section. And as always, thanks you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.